So I'm Charles Rangeley Wilson and I'm passionate about chalk streams and I design chalk stream restoration projects. When the Norfolk Rivers Trust and Holcomb Estate asked me to get involved in this project I was so excited because I thought here was a chance to put a river back where it used to be hundreds of years ago but it's been locked in a prison of a ditch for centuries. I couldn't even find any maps showing the original course but we were able to discern the original course through little clues in the landscape, aerial photos showing meanders in the ground in the, in, in, in the dry summer when the grass dries at different, in different patterns according to where the stream used to be. We looked at some old maps to see what the sort of meander, natural meander wavelength was up and downstream and we stitched it together and we worked out a very good idea or our best idea for where this river used to be. The objective of the project is to put the river back in touch with the floodplain, which is the real key to chalk stream restoration because they have been so manipulated and managed and shaped and corralled over, well, thousands of years and certainly hundreds of years with, with milling, with, uh, with the construction of flash locks to float stones up them to build priories, with water meadows, and with drainage and ditching and then in the late 20th century when we dredged them. Um, and that all takes its toll on the physical shape and the energy and the processes that are going on in the chalk stream. But if you put the river back where it wants to be and you give it the natural shape, the, the meanders that allow it to live and breathe dynamically as a river and you can see how close it's now flowing in relation to its floodplain. This is July and any uplift now is just is putting that river back in touch, it's allowing it to breathe and it's setting in train the natural river processes that will allow it to come to life. My name is James Anderson, I'm a project manager at Cremain Tain. We were awarded the uh, restoration project from the Norfolk Rivers Trust on the River Stiffkey here. It was a project we were really excited to be involved with. It was a flagship project from the Norfolk Rivers Trust that looked to increase the connectivity of the Stiffkey with its natural floodplain. As you can see behind me, the old channel had been overpopulated by burr reed. This is a result of sedimentation over many years caused by the straightened channel and it's not a natural population of plants you'd expect to see in a chalk stream such as this. This resulted in a lack of biodiversity and what we've now achieved is a much more diverse habitat, much more natural to what should have been here in the first place. We started the project at the upstream of the site which was very soft and peaty which did cause some problems in terms of getting large plant machinery up there. We ended up having to dig that whole first section with, the, with an excavator on bog mats and some track dumpers to be able to access there to that area but the end result was exactly what we were after and we managed to achieve what we were aiming to. The project was divided into four different sections that joined in and out of the original channel and also crossed several ditches as we moved down the river valley. It was important to get the order of excavation correct so that we didn't cut ourselves off or flood areas that we needed to excavate at a later point. As we moved down into the second section, it involved bunding off the old channel and inserting pipe work into those bunds to ena enable a certain amount of water into the old channel to keep it wet. This provided an increased uh, biodiversity for the site with backwaters as well as the newly excavated channel. We started by setting the channel out uh, based on the design supplied by Norfolk Rivers Trust and using a global navigation satellite system. We put pegs along the outline of the channel uh, and then excavated it down to half depth. We then set out the internal channel which then went down to full depth. This then left berm areas around uh, the inside of bends and also deeper areas around the outside of the bends to try and mimic the natural uh, shape the channel would be. When we were excavating it, we also left the channel very rough uh, to make sure that we tried to help kickstart natural processes in the river channel. The worst thing you can do is to have a very smooth, uniform, newly excavated channel, so it was intentionally left very rough. Once we'd finished excavating the channel, we then introduced Site 1 gravels from a borrow pit on the side of the hill. The gravel was spread very unevenly to try and mimic natural conditions, and over time the water will move this around and it will find its natural place. Once the gravels had been installed, it was then time to connect the new channels to the old channel and allow the water to flow. 
This was done from the top of the site downstream, finishing at the bottom end, connecting that section last. Several weeks after the water had been connected, Norfolk Rivers Trust then returned to site to install a large quantity of woody debris. The woody debris is a really important component of a natural habitat in the chalk stream and adds a huge amount again to the biodiversity, providing habitat for insects and, other, and invertebrates and things like that, that will provide a, a real good basis for the bottom of the food chain. One of the main constraints with the project was an Iron Age fort that was adjacent to the site, as you can see over my right hand shoulder. This meant that when we were digging in this area, we had to have a watching brief from an archaeologist. We did actually find several features associated with the fort, including an old ford that actually went through the original channel, uh, which would have been used to access the fort a couple of thousand years ago. And this showed that we were in the location of the original channel. One of the other constraints of the site was the presence of two protected species, white clawed crayfish and water voles. And the works had to be planned to avoid breeding seasons for these two species. So the timing of things was quite critical. There was also a lot of mitigation that went in place before we started works and also during the works. For example, at the locations where we were cutting through the channel, the grass had to be cut very short in advance to make sure water voles weren't populating the area. And also in the areas where we were backfilling ditches, rescue operation had to take place to remove white claw crayfish to make sure we weren't burying any. This was a really important aspect of the project to make sure we weren't negatively impacting any protected species that were present on the site. Overall the project was really successful. Norfolk Rivers Trust were very happy with the outcomes and we're really excited to see how the site develops in years to come. Jonah, I'm the Technical Director at Norfolk Rivers Trust. We first looked at this bit of river 13 years ago. We walked the whole of the River Stiff Key looking for opportunities to improve it and ways to bring it back to health. And th this bit of river stood out as a major opportunity. So it had been straightened, I think, at least 400 years ago, centuries ago. Um, and the floodplain had been drained and the river had been embanked. Um, and the river itself wasn't actually in, in too, too bad condition actually. There's a lot of wildlife in there, trout and waterfalls and things, but it, it had no connection with the floodplain whatsoever. So it, it, ecologically, it, it, it was really struggling. It wasn't able to spill its flood waters. It wasn't able to wet the floodplain. There weren't all these wetlands around us that we can see now. Um, it wasn't able to drop its silt and its nutrients on the floodplain and transport seeds. So it, it kind of looked okay, but um, in, in reality, it, it was really struggling. Um, and we, we had a, a big opportunity to do something here, a, a lot of constraints. Um, so it's a really sensitive archeological site. Um, it's got several different tenants um, who, who farm it and we needed all of them to agree with what we wanted to do. So it took us a long, long time, but um, yeah, we, we saw fairly clearly, I think, straight away what we wanted to do. Um, and now in, in the last year we've, we've finally been able to deliver it. So we picked Aquamaintain as a contractor, um, partly based on price, that, that's always a consideration, but actually mostly on experience. Um, that They're a company that we've worked with quite a few times, probably over the last six or seven years I think. Um, and that, that, that really paid off, the, the experience that the staff had on site and the the dedication to it really and the, the willingness to to make it work and adjust the plans and just just really work with us and work with Charles as well to, to deliver the best possible river restoration that we could. Um, yeah, they, they, were, they were absolutely superb, no, no complaints at all throughout the whole thing. But really the, the, the dedication and I think the communication as well and the, the willingness to listen and be patient with as well. We faffed about and changed plans and altered things. Um, and also just add, adding that to the, the skills that the staff had on site, um, with the digger in particular. Um, the, the guys were absolutely amazing. Um, and you can see now this, this is only a, a year later for, for most of the project, we're looking at it now and it, it just looks like it's, it's never been touched. It looks like there's never been a digger here. Um, and that's exactly how we want it to be. So in a way, what we do is very crude. We come in here with diggers, we trace that meander pattern, we work out how wide the channel needs to be, 
we work out the meander wavelength and we construct a new channel and then we block it off at the top end, the old channel, and we let the water back down. And then we fill it with furniture, great big trees, to kickstart those dynamic processes and the interaction of flow with structure that will create the complex, interesting spaces for lots and lots of habitat, really, for all the insects and the fish and the, uh, the birds and the plants. And then you just walk away and it's amazing. I, we finished this project last autumn and uh, just as the rains came and we've been so blessed with, I guess a lot of farmers haven't been blessed with this, with, but in terms of river restoration, we've been so blessed with such a, a sort of a drenching because it's really brought the river to life. It's really active. It's doing its thing. We've seen loads of wading birds on the floodplain. The trout have moved in as I've been sitting here just now waiting for the camera to warm up. I've watched insects coming down the river towards me and getting eaten by the trout that have moved into the space. So that's what these projects are all about. So I think that here we've, we've done a good job of kind of guessworking our way to the natural meander pattern of the river. Um, the Aquamaintain did an amazing job of carving a channel which from the very outset looked natural. Kim, late Kim uh, Gorns was the digger driver and he was the absolute Michelangelo of digger drivers. I've never seen someone get what I wanted them to do so quickly. It was straight away I thought this project's going to really work because Kim is a, a maestro. Uh, it's a bit of a monument to Kim this project. He, uh, he, he just I showed him some pictures of spring creeks in New Zealand and lovely bits of chalk stream in England. I said I want it like that and he just did it straight away. Um, so that's all, all very, very encouraging. And now we've really just got to wait and see what happens in terms of the wildlife moving back in. But we've already had some very, very good indications. So Jake Fines, who's the conservation manager at Holcomb, he told me that last year and in previous years, they'd generally seen about a pair of lapwing on these meadows and they generally didn't breed successfully. Uh, and this year we had six pairs one of which had four chicks and the other five pairs had two chicks. So that is a, you know, just in one little species, one species, that is an amazing vignette of, of what I hope is possible. Also, the River Stiffkey was and could be again a very, very important river for migratory trout. And uh, hopefully this will provide two kilometres of grade A habitat for, for A, for the young trout, um, and also for the adult fish when they come back to spawn. It would be my absolute dream to see salmon once again ascend the chalk streams of East Anglia, as they almost certainly did 13 or 1400 years ago. This stream is also a bit of an arc for white-clawed crayfish, which we know are, are critically endangered, so this will have provided some amazing habitat for them. And then there are all of those iconic chalk stream species that we like to see, the starwort and the ranunculus and the berilla, the flag iris, the marsh orchids along the riverbanks, um, the invertebrates, where not only do you want uh, the biodiversity, and I'm, I'm sure this project will add to biodiversity because just look how, look how wet everything is, um, but also the abundance which we forget about the abundance that used to exist and which we've kind of almost lost touch with. So these are the sorts of things we're aiming for with this project. And the, the key idea though, which we hope we've managed to do here and on some other similar projects elsewhere in East Anglia, is about that idea of starting the, the, the natural processes. You let the river out of jail and you give it back the gravitational pull of its natural gradient and the shape of its natural meanders and you give it some room to self-adjust within that space and you give it some structure to interact with and then you just walk away and let nature do its magic and uh, uh, hopefully this will have sort of you know will teach us some lessons about dynamic processes there's a final thought in that space you know i walked from the fort across here to film this today and We've just had an enormous dump of rain in the middle of July. So the river, and it's quite a flashy chalk stream, the Stiffkey, has broken out of its banks and it's starting to 
fragment across the, the floodplain. And just over there, there is actually the evolution of a meandering sub-channel starting to erode across the floodplain over there to my left, which is just, uh, it sounds a bit nerdy, but I was so excited to see it. <laughs>